Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, May 30th. Today's topic is connect, create, and collaborate with science websites, web tools, and apps with our special guest Leticia Cooper. Peggy George, Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore are your show hosts. I'm Lori Moffat, and thanks so much to Tammy Moore for doing the closed captioning today and all the other shows as well. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy so that she's going to introduce Tia for us today. Well, hello, everyone. We are so excited to be able to share the amazing Tech with Tia today. Um, she goes by Tia, and I'm sure she'll help us sort this all out. Her name is Latia. Um, but we all know her as Tech with Tia. And I have followed her for years. And we've had her on our show before. But today, we're going to have a really special focus. And the focus is going to be just one little old tab from a huge stem live binder. And today she's going to be focusing on science websites, tools, and apps. And you are going to leave so excited and so energized, not only by the tools she's sharing, because they're so great, but by her enthusiasm and great ideas for using them in the classroom. You will see that Tia is passionate about teaching and learning through technology. She really believes that when technology is integrated in the classroom, all students are motivated to learn. So she loves sharing resources that she discovers with other teachers. And if you look up her LiveBinder on the LiveBinder site, you will see how many hundred thousand people have viewed her website and shared it with others. That's a great testimony. Um, she graduated from South Carolina State University and also from Grand Canyon University with her master's in instructional tech. She currently works for the Carolina Consortium for Enterprise Learning. She's an instructional technology specialist for grades K through 12, which is very exciting for those teachers to have her full time. She's presented at lots of conferences. And as a matter of fact, I saw her do a version of this presentation on simple K-12 not too long ago. And I said, you have to come and share this with our viewers. And We'll even give you more time, because she always has so many great things to share. There's never enough time. So she gets a little more time today, and she's going to go quickly through a lot of things, but I know that you're going to love it. So feel free to check out her website, her li all of her live binders. And at this point, I want to ask her the newbie question and then turn the mic over to her. And our newbie question for today is, how has technology changed the way you teach science? Welcome to you, and take it away. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me on Classroom 2.0 today. I am so excited to be here. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity. Peggy, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Um, Thank you for always supporting me. Lori, thank you for running this, uh, hosting the show, and also Tammy for hosting. I really appreciate it. I am so excited today to be here with you all to uh, share some science apps and websites and tools. Um, I get super excited about all of this, so I am ready to go. So I just wanted to know how has technology changed the way you teach science? Because there's so many things out here today um, that we're being inundated with technology-wise. So um, if you could answer in the chat would be great. Um, but just tell me how technology, and think about how um, some of the tools that I'm going to show you today um, 
that you could show a teacher if you're not in the classroom or you could share with others and how you could integrate them in your classroom whether it be with an interactive whiteboard. Some of you are one to one, some of you are not and that's fine. I'm going to have tools today for you that you can use regardless of uh, the type of technology you have in your classroom. And as I like to say, there is a, where there is a will, there is a way. So um, without further ado, we're going to move on today to connect, create, and collaborate with science websites and tools. You can reach me on Twitter at, at TechWithTia, and you can also visit my website with, at www.techwithtia.com. And I'm going to um, switch to, this is just a picture of me if you're wondering what I look like. Um, but I'm going to switch to the application sharing. So remember to check mark that box so that you can see the whole screen. And I like to show my live binder. Again, it's also in the Classroom 2.0 live binder um, where you can find this uh, particular uh, tab. This is my 100 plus STEM websites and web tools for teachers and it continues to grow. Um, I cannot thank Tina and Barbara enough of um, live binders who created live binders enough for this tool because live binders allows you to keep everything in one place and continue to grow um, with it. So I love this tool. If you haven't used live binders, be sure to think about using it. So we're on the Connect, Create, and Collaborate, Collaborate Science tab. It's the green one. Just ignore the blue one <laughs> for right now, but it's the green one. And the first website that we're going to talk about today is Science Netlinks. And this is just a resource page for uh, finding great web tools, web apps, and websites for K-12 K uh, science lesson. So here you can search for anything. Um, if I search for cells, it's going to give me uh, lots of things on cells and I'll just click search and then I'll break it down. I can look by grade level. If I want it to go to fifth grade, I could also search uh, biology and I could look for lessons, tools, or after school resources or science updates. So, and if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of resources. I can also click the type, which is interactive, and it'll give me a lot of interactive resources that I can use in my classroom. So, this is one of those sites where you just type in a bunch of different things and you'll see a myriad of resources for you. Um, they always are adding new resources um, to their um, collections. And if you look in here at collections, they have lots of things like Science Explained, the Science of Cancer, STEM and the Common Core. Take a look at that. I know some of you said that you were not STEM, so-called call STEM or STEAM schools, but a lot of schools are moving towards integrating um, STEM into their schools. And so while you may not be called that, um, this is what they're moving towards. And so these are great resources there for STEM and the Common Core if you're a Common Core state. South Carolina just switched from uh, Common Core so, <laughs> to something that looks eerily similar to Common Core. Uh, so there's not much of a difference. Um, so there's great things in here. They have videos in here, periodicals, just uh, many, many different uh, apps. And here you have science apps in here. So you can click on science apps and you can search by grade level and you can get loads of apps. And of course there are going to be some that I'm going to show you today that are in here. Um, some of them are paid, some of them are not. But my theme is if it's not free, it's not for me. <laughs> so um, I try to look for some free ones first before you have to go to the paid route. But Science Netlink is, is going to give you loads of different things. And if you need lessons, who doesn't need a lesson, those are going to be in here, okay? They have a uh, systems of the human body lesson and it's going to give you all these interactives, it's going to give you how to teach it, the motivation to it, um, and the development. And even um, worksheets or e-sheets, whatever you would like to call them, and then extensions also. So this is just some great resources in here. The next tab I want to show you is PBS Learning Media. It used to be called teachersdomain.org, but PBS Learning Media has taken it over and it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, it is great. And let's see if I can talk just a little bit more. 
With PBS Learning Media, it's going to give you loads of standards. First of all, you can browse by your state standards. So you can browse by the type of standards. Um, you can select the type of document that you would like, and you can select grade level. Okay? So if I just wanted to search for third grade and hit browse, oh, please select the document. Let's go Common Core. And I could search, um, now they're saying reading or math, let me go national. So here's some national standards. And then I can search for the NSTA National Science and Education Standards are here. Um, and I can click there and hit Browse. And they're going to give me loads of K-12 standards. And if I click on one, I'm going to get interactive web pages. Um, I can find documents. And the great thing about PBS Learning Media, it will break it down by subject. Then you can break it down by media type here. And I always like using interactives in my classroom. Why? It engages students. If you have an interactive whiteboard, use it. If you have computers in your classroom, have your kids get online and use those computers um, to just, you know, pick their interest. I always had that bell ringer. My bell ringers were always interactive. Why? Because it got kids motivated. It um, piqued their curiosity. And this is a good way to do that. So there's loads of things on here that you can use for science, for STEM, um, for math, anything. So be sure to check this page out. It also has permitted use. So let's say that you want to stream, download, share, and modify. They actually have 13 resources that you can stream, download, and modify. I've built science uh, flip chart lessons um, using some of these downloads, and it's awesome because I can put it right in the teacher's lesson, and um, they don't have to come back to PBS Learning Media, or you can embed them in there, and you can share them um, copyright free. So I think this is a great website for that, um, and that's called PBS Learning Media. The next site is Brain Genie Science. Oh my goodness. I had a high school physics, uh, physics teacher who had just gotten, gotten iPads. And he was like, what am I going to do with these? And I'm like, well, go to braingenie.com and click on physics. And here are all your physics lessons. How great is this? He was like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this. This is wonderful. OK? And um, of course, <laughs> It helped him because not only did he have a free resource that is great, that is uh, professors are creating this, um, but are being used on any type of device. Um, Brain Genie is free um, to anyone. You can sign your kids up. It allows them to actually, um, you can check uh, and monitor their work on this. Uh, so they have physics, they have biology, they have chemistry, and they have 6th through 8th grade science. So any of you teachers out there who teach science in 6th through 12th grade, Brain Genie is great because you can put your kids on here, just upload a CSV file of them. Um, they have usernames and passwords, and you can actually monitor and take them through this. Let's say you have a student come through in the middle of the year and they need to get caught up. This is a good way for them to get caught up, or for, if they're missing that important information that they didn't learn in uh, eighth grade, you can put them on Brain Genie and help catch them up. They can do this at home. They can do it on their cell phones. I mean, it's just a really awesome site. Um, and the Let's click on one just so I can show you what it offers. It, allow, it will show students a video, and then they can practice what they've done. So here's one on what is weight. So here's the practice. And they can also play against people, which kids really like. They really like playing against others. And they can do this safely on this site. Um, and there's not a lot of um, flash-based things that take away from the learning. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so, and I like that about it. But as you see here, you can answer the question. And of course, I'm going to be wrong. And here it says I answered incorrectly. And it tells you what their solution is. It will tell you how much time that student um, stayed on that question. Um, so it's got some really great things. And then you can also watch a video. The video may not play in the application sharing, which is fine. But it does have a video. So the kids can see a video, and then they can go back and practice it. Isn't that great? And guess what? They have this all for math, too, for K. Um, through 12th grade math, here you go. 
Um, so if you're looking for some math resources, Brain Genie is another one for math resources. So I just love um, science on Brain Genie. Check it out and try it. The next tab I'm going to teach you is Instagram. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with Instagram. Okay, you put any term into Instagram, and you're going to get tons of resources. So you're saying, well, Tia, why do I need this? Look. Put your kids on Instagram and have them one place where they can go and branch out and find different resources that they could put into a uh, slideshow that they're creating that they could use as a part of a PBL unit or um, just as a presentation. You know, sometimes we want kids to create the presentation, but what if we actually had them go in here and learn all about the topic and then just report out on the topic? Wouldn't that be easier and wouldn't they learn more because they're not spending so much time creating it. So enough said about that. Let me go in and put in the word space. You can put it any word. I put in milk before. Hey, <laughs> loads of things come up. But if you can see on my screen, it creates an Instagram. Now what this is is that you're going to get a toolbar here and it's like a web and here you have space and then they have all these words surrounding space, okay? And then over here has key facts of what space is um, and different things. Like space can be the impact on human and cultural behavior. It depends on what you're looking for. It also has websites. So you can click on websites, and they're going to give you NASA websites. Isn't that great? And then you're going to click on videos, and then the students are going to get videos. So if they are just studying these and they're able to, you know, pick up and show you different ones. They can come to the interactive whiteboard, type in their word, and start presenting right from there because they've studied everything instead of trying to create everything. Um, images. It's going to give you some images, not many, but that's okay because you can always find images in different ways. There's also concepts here, and then the students can take notes. Now, another way that you could use this is just to talk about a specific topic in your classroom that you're using. So let's say that um, your kids' space was your topic. They could journal about it, okay? But you can't. You have to. They have to log in. There are. There is an education portion. A lot of this is free, so don't be afraid of it. <laughs> um, so you can. The kids can save their journal, and then they have quizzes. So you can have the kids actually study, space the term, and then it's going to give them a quiz on it. So you'll know whether did they view the video, you know. And you can always say, hey, do this, you know, type in space in the integral view the key facts, view the videos, and you know, give them certain points they have to meet, and then they would take this quiz. So, and also a great thing about this, any age level can use this. You see the difficulty bar here um, in the top left? If you scroll down, it will make it less difficult. So if you have first graders and second graders, third graders, here's different words like sun, planet, moon, space, earth. And then if I go all the way to the right, look how it changes. Andromeda galaxy, solar wind, dwarf planet, Hubble Space Telescope. So it gets more difficult. Okay, isn't that a great thing? You could also share the Instagram on Twitter, Facebook, and any place else that you need. You have embed codes. So you can actually embed one on your website or embed it in Edmodo for your students. And then guess what? Now the kids can go directly there to where you need them to go. I mean, this is super. And um, it's a great uh, place to research things. Like I said, you can put any term in, like milk, and you're going to get tons of things on milk. Now, everything that's in yellow, any of the words that are in the map, if you click on acids, so I click, clicked on milk, but maybe I need to m learn more about acids. So I click on acid, and it's going to give me another grot with even more information about what that is and how it's related to milk. Isn't that wonderful? What kid wouldn't like this for research purposes? Okay, so this is one way to get them started. All right, that's Instagram. Hope you love it. I love it. Think you should use it. Biodigital Human. I love this site. Okay, why? Because it gives you uh, the human body without, um, and I'm going to sign in with Google. If you, and ignore all my Google accounts, please. <laughs> I have tons of them. <laughs> As many of you do, I'm sure. Um, but once you log in, and I hope, let's see. Okay, let's get started. And it sometimes takes a long time to load, but it's worth it. Um, oh. And here's your human skeleton. I hope everyone can see this. And this skeleton, uh, you can make it male or female. Okay, it'll just repopulate. 
And you can turn on or off the skeletal system. So let's turn on the digestive system. Look at there. Isn't that neat? And you see all the insides of someone. Don't you wish when you went to your doctor that they had this so you can actually click on it and they can show you what's wrong with yourself. So let's say, you know, you need to get your colon checkup. So let's look at your colon. And guess what they're going to show you? Common conditions with the colon. Okay? So his colon not... Uh, pilots. My mother just had a colonoscopy in March. Oh, gosh, that was terrible. Um, we stayed up all night, and it was oh, horrible. But um, I could go in. Wouldn't it be great if the doctor could go in and just show her her colon polyps and what they look like? Isn't that awesome? I think it's crazy that you could do that. And wouldn't that interest a student who wants to be a doctor, a nurse, or just any part of the medical field that they could go in and see what those truly look like? Isn't this a good tool for um, anyone who's just learning about the body? And when you click there, it even shows you, you know, what part, how it grows inside your body, what it is. Um, it's just awesome. You know, and they give you even more information about it. These are for the National Health Institute and diabetes. Um, so it's just great. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. And I can also turn off my skeletal system if I need it to. Um, I can just click on different types of things. The nervous system, and that's going to show up. Um, it's just, I mean, it's so many great things. They can click on bones. Um, so it's just great for exploring the body. Um, you've got to use this. Kids love this. I mean, even if you're just talking about something else. I mean, you could be talking about, you know, how people died during the Civil War or something for a history teacher and then relate it to this. There's so many different ways to use BioDigital Human. I really love it. And I don't pay for the premium features. Okay. <laughs> Another one is 60 Symbols. Um, 60 Symbols is really great. Um, it focuses on YouTube. But let's say that the student encounters a symbol that they don't know our parent does, this is a great little site that will have you click on E equals MC squared. It'll take you to a YouTube video of E equals MC squared. I just think that's great. It's a good way to introduce a certain symbol to the students, but they may or may not understand. So think about using uh, 60 symbols in your classroom. Um, it is very basic. It, 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 it is what it is. It has symbols. You click on it, you see a video. <laughs> So I think that's a uh, great thing. Stop Disasters. I actually love this site. I'm not sure if you all can hear that beeping or not. But this site will allow you to actually interact with uh, different types of natural disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, all of those great things. So I'm going to hit play, play game. You know about the floods that are happening in Houston, Texas right now, all over Texas, really? Guess what? You can have your kids go in and actually manage a flood. Wouldn't that be great that if people who were in these situations where they could help people, that they could go in and actually see what they could do to actually prevent a flood? OK? So I'm going to hit play game. And I can actually choose a flood. And that's here. I can select my difficulty level, easy, medium, or hard. That means your map is uh, smaller or larger. And so now, and this is a great econ lesson too, because they have to spend money on how they will actually save people, OK? You have a population right now of 446. And you have to, you know, this depends on their livelihood. So what happens at the bottom is that the probability of the flood here grows as you go along, as you spend your money. OK, so you've got $50,000, and you've got to use things to help. Um, you know, would I want to develop a house right there, and it's going to spend my money? Or maybe I need a defense. So I'm going to put up some stabilized slopes to help when the flood happens. So it really um, teaches students how, how they can react to natural disasters, earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires. So I really would suggest that you maybe take them in a computer lab and do this with them, especially now that we're talking about the floods in Houston. This would be a great way um, uh, to have them see what a flood does when we don't prepare for it. So this is a great site, stopdisasters.com. And I hope that you would think about using this. This is maybe a good end of the year activity, or even you know right now. Um, you can do it whole group on the board. 
and just have groups do it or um, have the class decide which goes best where, you know. Um, don't put the school right here because the school could get flooded. <laughs> All that good stuff happens. You know, you have to think about that. So uh, that stop disasters, it's really neat. I've had uh, people who work in Hilton Head, South Carolina, tell me that they were going to use this with their group um, to uh, train them on how what they should do to maybe uh, – have barriers uh, along the ocean uh, to stop hurricanes and things like that. The next site I want to show you is CSIV Experience. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen this, and if anybody lives in Florida, you should go to the actual CSIV Experience on International Boulevard. <laughs> um, they actually have where you can go in and do the adventures. So what I want to show you now is the actual, and if you love CSI the show, here it is, all your favorite characters. And you want to click on the web adventures, which is right here, and it's going to take you to where kids can actually delve into forensic science. Um, and it's very interactive. So down here, um, it will take you to different cases. There are five cases. Now, this could be an ongoing unit throughout the year, um, because some kids will actually love this. They can log in as a guest or they can log in and save it, and it's totally free. Okay, there's a For Educators button, so you can see how you can use it in your classroom. But I'm just going to click on Case 1, so you can see how great this stuff is. I'm going to play as a guest today, and hit Start, and it's going to load. And guess what? I always like for um, going to the medical examiner. Hello? Who doesn't love the medical examiner? So if anybody gets grossed out, you might not want to watch this part, but we'll see. <laughs> Here's the morgue, okay, and someone's been in a car accident, and he's going to have to go in and actually do um, the examination of the body, and this is where you're going to do an autopsy. And for a student who's interested in this type of thing, this would be great to show them, okay? Um, uh, do I see anything interesting? And it just clicks on the bruises, and they'll go through it, and it'll tell you about it, because you want to see, you know, could this be, have been an uh, accident or wasn't an accident, you know? So we can also practice the autopsy, and as you see, it says viewer discretion advice, so remember that, okay? Um, real simple here. Um, if you're queasy, you might not want to do this, but your kids are going to love it. Hello? They're going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, this is so neat. Okay, and you're saving money on dissecting frogs and cats, I guess. But uh, they'll ask you what you should wear, gloves, um, scrubs, uh, and a face shield. Okay, yeah, you need all those things. And then you've got to start with different tools. And this is where the, you know, scaffold comes in. And this is where you're going to start cutting. So isn't that neat? I think that's so cool. And it kind of clicks on what they have to do. I'm not going to stay here long in the interest of time because I've got so much else to show you. But isn't that great? Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> and then it goes from there. <laughs> but it's some great stuff on here. So it's just like motivate them with stuff like this when you're talking about the body and anatomy and things like this. Great opener for those things. Okay, I'm going to skip over to Ed Heads. Ed Heads does the same type of thing. I'm sure you all know about it, but if you've forgotten about it, make sure that you go back to it. And you can choose different activities. Designing a cell phone. What student would love to do that at the beginning of the year to get them just interested in science at any age? And you can do a lot of these on your interactive whiteboards, um, on a computer, and the kids will love it. But it's just as interactive as that CSI experiment. You also have Study Jam Science, which is great. And when you click on the Science tab, you're going to get all these different science topics. If you haven't seen this, you've got to check them out. And then so they have animals, and they'll talk about animal cells or vertebrates, and they're going to give the students a slideshow. They have a quiz involved. There's some keywords and vocabulary. There's different uh, related jams to this. Um, so it's really great. So Study Jam Science is um, a great site from Scholastic um, to use in your classroom. Another site I absolutely love is Ology, okay, Ology, because it explores some of the areas that we don't explore in school, like what does it mean to be an anthropologist? So let's take a look at it. And here's anthropology, and here's a young lady that's making her own paper, you know, 
And so we can talk about papyrus and all those things. And then the one thing I love about this site is that at the bottom here, anthropology stuff, you know how we talk about kids, um, reaching different kids' uh, modalities, you know, kinesthetic, you know, uh, tactile learners. Guess what? Here it is all laid out for you. And you can actually have them do maybe 10 of these or five of these to get a grade and say, you know, you have to do the quiz. You have to do an interview. You have to look at this. You have to make a story. You have to create your own stationery, mint your own coin. Those are all activities that get kids interested in anthropology. But they have loads of things. They have archaeology, astronomy, uh, the brain, biodiversity, climate change, which is a big topic now. So they can study that and see how that works. And then they can do all of these different things with climate change um, on their computers. They have hands-on activities. They can meet the ologists. Isn't that awesome? They can meet people who actually work in this field, and they can learn all about it. They can learn about the earth. Um, so it's really bringing your real life job into your classroom and what they could be in the future. Not just a topic, but what do you do when you become the anthropologist, the archaeologist, the astronomist, um, the astronaut, all of those things, okay? And they also have expeditions in here that the kids can go on to, South, um, to Antarctica, to uh, looking at flamingos, all of those great things. Okay, so check out that site. Um, another one I'm going to show you is E is for Explore. This, oh, it's not coming up. Let me skip. E is for Explore is great because it has loads of science things on it, okay, and it's not showing up very good. But as you can see there, she has an activity where the kids actually design a playground. So if you're doing measurement along with mathematics, this would be a great one to use. Um, here's Plant Scavenger Hunt. She has all the worksheets there for you that you could use and upload if you're using uh, iPads or uh, Windows tablets or any of those things. Android tablets, these are great little things. And she gives you all the cues for them. There's seed engineers and all those different things and how to do it differently than what you normally see. I think this is great. So if you're a science teacher, you might want to check these things out. The next one I would like to show you is My Favorite Scientist. I just like this one because, oh, look at Mr. Spock. You know, he's on here, and if you click on Mr. Spock, you're going to get a video about Mr. Spock, and they're going to discuss him. So it talks about Spock as a scientist. Um, they have Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin. So it's like getting to know those scientists and what they're about and what they discovered. A great way for kids to do a type of report that they could put into a video report, um, a slideshow. Um, and there's another tool I'll show you called Blend Space, which is next, that you could add this to. So if you click on Blend Space, and it used to be called Ed Canvas, so I haven't changed the wording in here. I apologize. <laughs> I get busy sometimes. But you can create lessons in five minutes, OK? Um, but really, um, it's really great. You can organize, assess, and track students. They have a built-in quiz um, creator. But I could even see kids using this, OK? Because you can create the classes um, in here. And it's so easy to use. And it doesn't want to work for me. OK, there it is. And if you go into the gallery, I'll just show you the gallery. Um, what happens is, and let's see science, the mole concept with 1,600 views. And so what it does is that it's, gonna, it's a platform that allows you to uh, drag YouTube videos into it, text, PDFs of the mole into it. It allows you to drag different text in, checkpoints for the student. This teacher has actually created the unit, and here's her videos about the unit. Here's her actual diagram on the unit. So I'm going to hit play. Then the videos aren't going to play, and that's OK. Um, here's the document that she wants her kids to see. So this is like a whole course in one. So we have then the practice, which the kids have to practice after doing the um, parts of the unit. Here's the checkpoints. Get a problem to work on from your teacher. Each person is in a group, so you're giving them lessons on what to do. Um, and there's so many different areas of this. So they can go out to different websites. Here's a word online, and it talks about the mole and the mass. So they also have their Cornell notes in here. You can add anything as a teacher. But guess what? 
kids can create accounts too, and they can actually create their own presentation by dragging and dropping things in. So if I were to log in, try to make this quick. Log in with Google. You can't get better than that, right? And you can click in I'm a teacher. Well, they have the resume. Go back. Oh, I thought I'm already. Oh, let's try a different one. There we go. Okay. So to create a new lesson, you just click on new lesson. And here you go. You can just drag and drop anything into here. It's so great. Um, you can search YouTube. If you don't have if YouTube is blocking your, in your school, just click the G for Google. And I could type in space. And I'm going to get images, and the kids can just drag and drop the images in here. I can look for different websites in here. There's one on NASA, so I'm going to drag and drop that in. Um, there's uh, Flickr images that they can use. For. There's even education. So if you're using education, um, you could type in space, and you see what you're going to get. Different. Um, well, these are some math problems. But there's here a 3C space book. So, of course, the kids would need to remove all this. But again, I said, instead of them spending time building a PowerPoint, why not have them build a blend space and they're able to actually use it a lot more. They can put in their own websites here. If I wanted to put in techwithtia.com, it's going to come up. It could be your web page. And I just drag it in and it goes right to it. I could also upload any of the files from my computer here. And I could drag that over. Uh, let me do random name generators. I could drag that over and put that file right on in there, and it comes on in. Okay, it's not dragging today. And then here I'm going to click Add Quiz. If I want to add a quiz after it, I could actually add a quiz for kids to do. Isn't that great? And the kids could create their own quizzes for their classmates to do. Blend Space is absolutely awesome if you haven't used it for creating and collaborating in science. Back to the binder, because time is going down. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't gotten through half of it, but let me uh, skip around a little bit. I'm going to go to the Xperia, X, um, Xperica HD app, which is an iTunes app. Okay, and I love this app. Um, here's some screenshots of it. It allows you to actually do uh, iPad uh, on the iPad. It allows you to do science experiments. Here's one on circuits on. Um, Here's another one on heat expansion and metals. So it gives you all these interactive, um, interactive science experiments for your students. Okay, so I think this is a great app. Check that one out. There's another app that I've been looking at. Oh, well, let's see. There's Kahoot, which is an app. It's also a website so you can use on any device. But Kahoot is great because you can ask students questions. Um, teachers love it. Um, it only takes a few minutes to create. They can just different. You can do so many different things with Kahoot, okay? Um, but they're always updating and adding new things to it. Also, another app I want to show you is interactive glossary apps. This is from CPO Science, and these are free. But these interactive glossary apps, um, you can quiz yourself. The kids can study life science, earth science, and physical science. So there's three apps here. Um, they're also on Android. I think the only one that's not there is the physical sciences. I have Android. So if you have Android or I, um, Apple, you can get either one of these apps, um, these life science apps to put on your devices. Or you could just pull it up. If you have an app, your own iPad as a teacher, hook it up to your interactive whiteboard and use this. So there's so many ways you can use things like this. Think outside of the box on everything that you do. Um, let's see. Bill Nye the Science Guy has an app. If you haven't seen his, it's there. Um, he has a great little app. Uh, things are popping up. Excuse me. One second. There's Bill Nye the Science Guy. And there he is. And he, this is probably more for younger age, but it's got some good things on here. There's video clips, um, there's do-it-yourself science, um, just all different types of activities. And I think it's a great, it's a free app. Check it out. It's rated 4 plus. And who doesn't love Bill Nye the Science Guy? Okay, there's tons of video science apps in here. So there's video science, and that's where you can find free videos um, that relate to your, my computer's acting up, excuse me. Uh, free apps that relate to 
free videos that relate to uh, different science topics like LED light, melting plastic, and then those are the videos that go with that. Okay, so chemical changes, they have articles on them that kids can look at. Um, and it's free, okay, to put on your devices. I know sometimes you're in a crunch and uh, it's hard to, uh, you know, sometimes you can't find the funds to pay for things. So think about different apps like that. Okay, um, let's see what time I have. This, uh, the STEM apps by S'more, if you click on that, you're going to get tons of science apps. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the link. The link will take you out to the actual website. And hopefully. <laughs> oh, see, that's what happens with technology, but that's okay. Oh, it's coming up. So here are your STEM apps. One of the first apps I see is Gizmos. Gizmos is, um, you have to have a paid subscription, but I used it from third grade to eighth grade, and the kids absolutely loved it. Um, it's interactive. It has assessments. It's one of those great things. Um, Gizmos is really great. It's from Explore Learning, so it's something that you may want to look into your school purchasing. Um, but it's definitely a great app to have. There's Science 360 for iPad. There are tons of apps on this page, Simple Physics. So this is a place where you can get all of those. Wow, I would love to put them all individually in my binder. I don't have time for that. Who does? But they're great sites that they do, like this one, like S'more. So take a look at it. Of course, there's Discovery Education. that has a great science tech book. If you're using that, that's great. But they definitely have loads of apps on here. You just want to click on them, and they'll give you a review of them um, and what they're about. Okay? So that's the STEM apps tab right there. And then, oh, the science channel. There's just tons of apps in here that you could use. The one thing I do want to show you, um, if you go to my website, oh, let me, before we go to my website, there's one called Citizen Sort. It's not an app. But I really like it because it has games and tools for kids, and it allows them to do matching and sorting um, using uh, with science. So the different types of games and tools, um, they've got things like the Happy Moths games where they have to you know, do scientific research and uh, classify photos of animals and different um, insects. There's also Forgotten Island where there's a robot and the kids go exploring. And anytime you can introduce a child to something like video game play, they love it because they, they've grown up on video games. I mean, I had an Atari way back when, and so while I put down the Atari, these kids are used to having it and they're growing with it and gameplay is nothing for them. So think about using something like a citizen sort in your classroom and it gives them, and they're like, wow, my teacher is so cool because she brought video games, she, he or she brought video games into the classroom for us to play. So this is a really great site that I would definitely spend some time looking at, get your kids excited about science, get them excited. So um, citizen sort is a great one. The next one, um, this past April, uh, EdTech calendar was full steam ahead. And if you click on the calendar, you can get a PDF version of the calendar. And on that PDF version, they have loads of clickable links for you. And you can just click the links, and there's tons of STEM things here. Um, some of them I talked about today. Um, but this has the STEAM component, the arts component to it, the math component, the coding that's a part of things today, just science and different things you can use. Um, and you can share this. I usually do one every month. May has been hectic. It's the end of the year, so May's out. <laughs> I'm surely doing June. Um, and if you're looking for resources, I always have science um, pretty much on there. Um, I love it. There's, I also have an old STEM calendar that you can reach by going to my calendar page up here, and you can download that STEM a STEM calendar, if you're looking for it, you can look through all of these calendars. As you can see here, there's always different sites. Um, some of these are in the live binder. Some of these are not. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't have time to put them all in here. There's also Tech for Students. So if you're looking for different collaboration tools, the Tech for Students one is a great one that you could use in your classroom um, with your students. Um, be sure to go back and look at some of these other tabs. I'm on the Connect, Create, and Create and Collaborate Science tab, but if you're looking for even more science things, just click on the science tab. 
<laughs> and here you go. There's even loads more. Okay, so um, don't stay married to that one tab. So click on the science. Click on the technology for tools that you can use to collaborate with with science and. Um, you know, most of these things in here are very, they can go across the board for any subject area. So just think about how you can apply them to science um, and what you're doing. There's coding apps in here if you need help with that. Um, there's loads of things in here. There's some STEM videos, and there's also STEM resources. If you're looking for a resource, use this binder to help you with that. Um, because uh, instead of looking all over the web, that's why I love live binders because you can look in one place and find that place where a teacher has collected all of those resources. And don't you want another educator to give you resources instead of Google? So I always say instead of Googling, Googling it, live binder it. Because that is the most important thing is to live binder it because you're going to find resources from teachers. I've had teachers create units with a live binder and actually go in and their kids love it because they can click on the tab and get the PDF. They can get the study guide. They have it at home. They have it on their cell phones. There's an app for live binders that you can use. And then you can click on the 100 plus STEM websites and web tools. The kids can have that as a, um, if you have the live binders app. And they can click on it automatically and go to the site. So I hope you all have enjoyed this today. I didn't even get to everything, but I hope you will use it in your classroom. Um, I surely appreciate it, you being here today. And if you have any questions, please um, feel free to share them. Let me go back here. Okay, I'm trying to log out. <laughs> One second. All right, so we're going to go back to the actual slideshow. So I thank you all. Yes, I do need to take a breath. <laughs> but seriously, thank you all for uh, coming. If you have any questions, hit me on Twitter, uh, email me at techwithtia at live.com or go to my website. You can email me from there. I'm on at Moto and Tech with Tia. Um, there's a group and Classroom 2.0. Um, thank you so much for having me today. So I hope you all saw some things that you can use, and I hope you enjoyed the binder and ta have taken something away today and you feel energized, because I'm energized now. <laughs> so thank you all so much. And I'm going to pass the mic back for any questions. I did manage to capture some questions, Tia. Um, this goes back to Instagrock. Uh, is Instagram a site that has free parts but also premium or paid parts? Yes, it does. Um, yeah. Once you get um, past a certain point, they have a, you can create an educator account. Mm -hmm. so you can have your kids underneath you as um, you know, like a class, mm -hmm. but you don't have to use it in that way. You can have your kids just go on and create their own account. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just use it for that purpose unless you just want to create a class where you have their quizzes in there. You know, I could always say, do the quiz and send me a screenshot of right. your score. So right. there's different ways around that. Mm -hmm. And if students have their own accounts, do they need emails to create accounts? You know what? I'm not, I think you, I, I am not sure on that one. I'm not okay. sure on that one. Instagram has a little play. When you first go to Instagram, they do have an area on there where you can um, look and see. But I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to tell you yes. Mm -hmm. I okay. think if you do the pay, probably that paid version, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You could create the um, usernames and passwords. OK. Mm -hmm. And for blend space, somebody asked, would that be something students can use for e-portfolios. Yes. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine just them putting everything, I mean, on there that they've done? I mean, think about the high school student who needs mm -hmm. to uh, show their artwork or their videos from their athletic events, put their um, put um, things about themselves, pictures of themselves, and they can just send out the link. They can embed it. They can share it on all the social media platforms. That is a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. I see no reason why that can't happen. I think it would be a great space for e-portfolios for just the classroom year or for them to just add on to as they go 
um, throughout their uh, years. So yes, because it, you can put anything into it. So mm -hmm. why not use it as an e-portfolio? Sure. And it's and <laughs> Yeah, well, that's even better. When you do come across a new resource, where do you put it first? It first First place is using my calendars because <laughs> that's how I usually find the resource. So usually it's okay. on my calendar first, and then then in my live binder. Mm -hmm. So those two places are where I keep it. Um, I'm so busy I don't post in my blog like I should. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, usually the first place is definitely my, my live binder when it's science websites and tools, and then the second. Um, the first place is the calendar, and then the second place is the live binder. And I'll be honest, sometimes I can see a resource and put it in my live binder, and it doesn't make it to the calendar because right. I've gone on to something else. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, those were the questions I managed to capture from chat. Does anyone have any other questions you'd like to ask Tia? You can type in chat, and I can ask from there. I see some people typing, but that doesn't mean there are going to be questions. Yeah. And I'll thank you all. And I guess yeah, just go ahead. Again, thanks so much for, for presenting today. I think everybody came away with many, many ideas. Um, and I don't see any other questions. So we'll go okay. to the, um, I think, no, this is still, there we go. That's where we should have been. Yeah. We did that slide. This is our <laughs> upcoming shows. And I think I'm going to turn this. Uh, where do you find mo most of the new resources you get? That was a oh question. my gosh, um, that science net links. Um, I uh, love the blogs of Richard Byrne, of um, Emerging EdTech, mm -hmm. um, Simple K-12, other um, presenters on Simple K-12. Um, I also, let's see, um, what do I say? I mean, just tons of different places. I have an RSS feed where I get everyone's information in one place. Um, EdSurge is a great one. TeachersFirst.com is a great one. Um, they always have updated stuff. Um, EdShelf. So mm -hmm. EdShelf, EdSurge, TeachersFirst.com are my top three, I would say. And then blogging-wise, all your individual bloggers have great things. Um, Go to Twitter. You know, go to Twitter and put in science apps or science websites and just see what pops up. Sometimes I follow the different conferences, even though I can't attend. If you put uh, hashtag ISTE, hashtag TCEA, um, just all the different uh, conferences, and guess what? You'll see different sites flowing through those. Even though you can't attend, hey, you can get the resources. So um, just using those are great. Uh, that is the way I find things is just mm -hmm. staying up to date um, on things like that. And so that's pretty much how I do it. Great. And so I hope that helps someone. <laughs> there are tons of resources out there. Yeah, you there have are. to explore, explore, explore. And, and then you have to go to Classroom 2.0. You sure. have to come to the first <laughs> shows, and you have to go to the live binders and just yeah, look for great things. Exactly. Again, thank you so much. And I will, well, I don't see Peggy in the room right now. She could have gotten dropped. So I will take over for the upcoming shows. On June 6th, next week, we have Canva with Lisa Johnson at Tech Chef for You. June 13th, Math Playground Updates with Colleen King. June 20th, 10 Marks Math Program. June 27th through the July 31st, we're actually going to be taking a summer break. Shows will resume on August 1st. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest venture. He's gathered together all of his PD into one location, including the Host Your Own Webinar Series. You can sign up 
for a Blackboard Collaborate room, as long as your event is public, it's a free event. You can nominate a featured teacher for the month. Um, and there's, this is the entire URL for the, the form. The form is also in the live binder in the resources tab. Uh, if you currently are a teacher, you can nominate yourself as well. When you exit the session, you'll, you, your browser should open the Classroom 2.0 Live Survey. And you can complete that survey. There's also usually a link in the chat box. But it's also in the Live Binder. So you can go to the Live Binder. And in the Resources tab near the bottom, one of those links is for the survey. At the bottom of the survey, there's a professional development certificate request that you can make. Type in your name as you'd want it to appear on the survey. Your name actually shows up on the, on the survey itself. Make sure, though, that you include a personal email address with your request. Schools tend to block this from getting to you. So you might not receive it if you ask for it with your school email address. The audio and video collection are posted on iTunes U so that you can download any of the archives that way as well. There's also an RSS feed of past recordings, including full recordings of these sessions um, on the Classroom 2.0 Live website. Special thanks again to Latia Cooper, Tech with Tia, to Steve Harvidon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weasley.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much to, for coming here on a Saturday and spending time with us.